Good afternoon and welcome to another broadcast with Straight Talk about the Blending Family. Hi, I'm Doc D. I'm Doc Michelle. And, and we, we are the Mangos. Do you know how we do it here? Before we go forward, we're going to have a brief word of prayer. Yes. Dear God, thank you for this amazing day. God, thank you for everything that you've already done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this episode. What I believe is going to be epic, God. We ask you to bless our phenomenal guests. Bless everything that we're going to talk about today, God. We thank you for our audience. We pray that they will tune in or, or, or share this, this amazing broadcast. And also, God, let them know that they are special and that they're valuable. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much for tuning in. We want to first do our thank yous. We want to thank the Lord first and foremost for allowing us to have this platform. We thank him so much because we appreciate it because this was his idea. This was a God idea. So we thank the Lord. Uh, we want to thank Dr. Lionel Green and the WBGR staff here at the studio. We want to thank the prayer warriors, those who are praying for us and praying for the show and those who support the show, those who watch it and they're sharing it and um, inspiring people. We just love you all. and We thank you so much for everything that you do. Wow. That's incredible. <laughs> so you know what you got to do next. All right. So I am going to read. We have a guest on our show today. Yes, we an do. An illustrious guest. And Say that word fast. Illustrious. Uh, and her name is Dr. Leslie Aronette Green. And Dr. Leslie, I'm going to read her bio. And after I read her bio, we're going to cut to a short commercial break. And then in the hot seat. She's going to be sitting in the hot seat. Dr. Leslie, I turned after, it up today. <laughs> after the commercial break. I turned break, the knob up. After she don't know. After the commercial know. break, Dr. Leslie will be sitting here in the hot seat. But guess seat. what? She can handle the hot yes, seat. She, she can. Us. Yes, she can. But I, man, I need to turn it up. Let me triple Let me triple the heat. Let me do that. Go ahead and read that wonderful young lady's bio. All right. Leslie Aronette Green was born December 26, 1971 at DeWitt Army Hospital in Fort Belvoir, Virginia. She is the oldest child of Luther A. Bailey II in Washington, D.C. and Bernadette V. Bailey Antigua and, Bar and Bar Barbuda, both of whom served proudly in the United States Army. Leslie is a proud and dedicated wife, mother, and grandmother. At the age of seven, she discovered her voice while singing The Greatest Love of All as her father played the guitar. This was the beginning of what would become a lifetime commitment to music. Throughout the years, she sang in both school and church choirs, and as an adult, she began a music career as a solo artist as well as being a member of, a, of several singing groups. In 1992, Leslie met her, hus her now husband, Dr. Lionel Green Sr., which now they have been married for 25 years. Wow. Woo! Awesome. Hey, hallelujah. That's awesome. Hallelujah, okay? Um, <laughs> this meeting at Fort Myer Army Base would, would mark the beginning of Leslie's professional music career. Her first endeavor would be as a singer and songwriter on the compilation CD entitled Come Together. Oh, come together. We <laughs> we, we to get her to sing a little bit that today. Come together. You know, I don't have no sense, but you know, I, I uh, like that. Under Lionel's first business called Baby G Recording Company. Yes. By 1996, the two were married and had begun recording together as husband and wife ministry. Now known as half of the award-winning duo, award-winning duo. <laughs> <laughs> had to put that out there. Yes. Lionel and Leslie, the I'll Make It Through songstress, was already building an impressive discography. 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 I, I don't have my glass on, so I can't read. You're going to have to find exactly. Well, I messed that word up, but that's all right. <laughs> that's all right. You're going to get Leslie, it. That's good. Along with Lionel, to date, have recorded 20 full length CDs. Wow. 20, okay? Five singles and 10 music videos. The I'll Make It Through music video was featured weekly on Black Entertainment Television, BET, for those of you who don't know the abbreviation for um, uh, BET, and the Word Network. Their work has received nods from the gospel industry in the form of several national awards, including a Stella Award nomination. Mm. In 1997, Leslie established BG Records, which stands for Believing in God Records. Under her label, in addition to becoming home to being home of to being home of Lionel and Leslie, 
She signed other recording artists and obtained an audio book publishing deal with the American Psycho Psychological Association, wow. ACA. That's awesome. This accomplishment was a groundbreaking moment because uh, in over a hundred years of APA's existence, they had never recorded an audio book from their extensive library of titles. BG Records was not only the first to make this happen, but it made such an impactful impression because the company is owned by a female African American. Although That's Leslie great stuff. had been doing voiceover, she does voiceovers, y'all. So if y'all have a, a commercial y'all want done, y'all have reach a reach out to Doc Leslie. Yeah, hey, okay, and we you get we'll her tell you that you'll yeah. get her information later. <laughs> um, voiceovers for many years by now. This deal would garner her more opportunities to showcase her voice acting skills. She became the main narrator and voice actor for the audiobooks under the APA deal. In addition to recording with her husband, recording audiobooks and touring worldwide, Leslie has recorded two spoken word projects of her own. The first entitled Healing Doses, Biblical Scriptures, and the second Proverbs, The Wisdom of Life. Her love for writing goes beyond songwriting as she has demonstrated in publishing a book with her husband called And the Two Shall Become One Flesh. <laughs> That's powerful. Now y'all couples need to get that one. No, you, no, they need to get it today. We gotta get, they need to get it today. I'm telling you, I'm counseling folks. They need to get it today. The two shall become one. A poetry book called Crystallized Tears, my lord. Ooh. And more than 30 nationally published articles and stories. Leslie has been the host of two radio shows on the WBGR network, which is owned by her husband, Dr. Lionel Green. Her show, Message by Angel, was a powerful 30-minute sermonette segment. The second show, Leslie was able to put her degree in psychology to use in a one-hour show called Psychology Matters. Mm. Leslie is the Minister of Music at Abiding Love Ministries of Fredericksburg, Virginia under the leadership of Pastors Margaret and Luther Bailey, where she also preaches once a month. She is also an ordained minister through Universal Life Church Monastery. So if you want to have Leslie on your show, you want to have her at your church, we'll give you that information. Yeah, because she coming, she coming to Family <laughs> Worship Center. We don't let y'all know. She coming. She going to blow up the building, but we, we she coming. <laughs> and we will get to that information in a bit too. Yes. Her love for ministry and preaching the gospel of Jesus Amen. Christ motivated her to become an expert rating certified life coach in 2014. In 2015, she established her 501c3 nonprofit organization, Enlightened Pathways. The wow. mission of Enlightened Pathways is to mentor young women by offering life coach services. I'm not going to go in further in, into that because we have questions that she's going to answer so she can be able to break that down for you. Um, for many years, um, from 2000 to 2015, she successfully held women's conferences called My Sister's Keeper, a venue that brought women together to network, fellowship, and provide food, clothing, and other resources. Her thirst for education is evident, and she commits to being a lifetime student of life. She is a firm believer in continuously keeping her mind as sharp as possible. In addition to having a bachelor's degree in psychology, she is a certified nursing assistant. Hello. Hello. And has I'm just taken trying to figure out what she hasn't done. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking in my mind. I'm trying to, you and, know, you jump for her being a mom and grandma. I mean, I'm just trying to figure and out. And has taken courses with John Hopkins. Blomberg School of Public Health, University of Toronto, and even Yale. She has held memberships with the American Psycho Psychological Association and the Black African American Christian Counselors. Christian Counselor, y'all. She a Christian Counselor. Listen, we got, she's so heavy the week. Now, maybe, maybe I ought to turn the heat down a little bit. <laughs> Cost some money. Despite, despite being diagnosed with se several chronic illnesses. Yeah. It has not stopped her from it's accomplishing clear. her goals, her it's dreams, clear. her work. She is committed to God's glory. Yeah. <laughs> let me let me tell y'all folks, the gem that we have on this show today. Yes. I, I'm just giving you a heads up that it's not only gonna <laughs> bless you, it's gonna challenge you, it's gonna encourage you. 
it's going to equip you to understand not how valuable how valuable you are but also that you can do anything mm -hmm. if you put your focus and your dedication under God to it and so after this commercial break short commercial break very short <laughs> We're not going to waste this woman of God, this this effervescent spirit time. She going to come see in the warm seat. Now, I'm turned, I'm turned the temperature down. All this stuff that God has allowed this woman to do. So, in a few moments, we're going to go to a brief commercial break. And then, Dr. Leslie Green will be sitting in that seat. Yes. And so, listen, tune in. Get your cupcakes. Get your crackers. Get your sandwiches, you know, get your get your favorite drink. You may be at lunch and you need to tune in to Facebook Live and WBGR Health and Wellness Network coming at you very briefly. Veganistic. It's gonna be a veganistic breakfast at Breakfast Mojo, and we're gonna give a review at the end of all this. So let's go ahead and see what we have. Okay, so what we have here is tofu. And so what you do is you get the tofu in a pack, whichever brand you want to get, um, it's fine. Get firm tofu and then squeeze the water out in the sink. And once you do squeeze all the water out, because tofu really doesn't have a flavor, it's, okay. it's actually soybean. These little, little, um, they look like little teeny miniature meatballs. Now, They're sausages. These, this gimme lean. That is the name okay. of it. <laughs> So I'm putting them in. Um, it smells great. And, and, and the reason you don't have to put them in is, is completely up to you. You know, those of you who... Um, it looks like sausage. It does look like sausage. And it looks like eggs. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to put some peppers and onions in, wow, which I already... That. Already prepared. Already so cut up. Like red. red onions, yellow, orange, and red Absolutely. Now for our green. Look at that. So what cilantro. is Cilantro. Cilantro, folks. Yes. Hey, look at the cilantro. cilantro. It's fresh cilantro. Look at mm -hmm. the pretty color there. <laughs> <laughs> this right here is yes. garlic and herb. So I'm put, it's not going to be strong, though. Now, okay. the minced garlic is strong, but this is not. Oh, yes. some Italian seasoning. Yes. Some rosemary. You know, when it's an yes. Italian medley, it's like a... It's like a melody, you know what I mean? <laughs> this is onion and herb. Onion and herb. Mm -hmm. This is lemon pepper. Lemon pepper. So lemon that's pepper. Interesting. That's interesting. I'm making sure that it is going to have a, a, a great flavor. Um, most of the time when people came down with diabetes or any of those um, diseases, they were in their 70s and 80s. You know, now people are in their 20s and they're being diagnosed. So, you know, we you definitely want to eat healthier. I'm not telling you to be a vegan. You know, you don't have to. I am. I've been vegan for 32 years. Yes, I usually put the top on because um, the steam in it, you know, help, it helps it to to cook long. Now, it doesn't take long to cook. That looks amazing with, with this. Tofu scramble. Tofu scramble. Some people say tofu eggs. It tastes like eggs. I can't say it's not. You can't tell me anything different. I'm gonna give it a breakfast brilliant. Because I almost feel like this is not enough. Like I need more. I <laughs> and need it's more. light. It's light so you can eat more. <laughs> it is light. It is light. It's very flavorful. Breakfast Mojo. I'm Comedian Koi. This is Michelle Mangum. And uh, once again, we'll be back with some more. Don't forget to subscribe with some more Breakfast Mojo. So make sure you tune in, huh? Welcome back. Welcome back to Straight Talk About the Blending Family. We are grateful. Now we have this gem, Dr. Leslie. Say hello yes. to our audience. Hello. <laughs> she is in the warm seat. Listen, my wife read her bio. And I had to turn the temperature down. This woman of God has done so much and still serving in so many great capacities. Welcome to our show, yes, Dr. Leslie. We well, are so thank grateful. You. Thank you for coming thank on the yes, show. Yes, but you got out of, listen, you got out of your space to come in our space. Audience, you better hold on. Get your get your note. Now let me let me tell you, Dr. Deasy, get your notepads. 
Okay, because you're going to need to write down this stuff. Uh-oh. You're going to be able to Uh-oh. write down this stuff. Listen, I have the first question. I okay. love the first question. Uh-oh, okay. So the first question, Doc Leslie, mm-hmm. it's almost a two-part. How did you meet your husband? Part one. And part two, how was your <laughs> blended family form? So, so tell okay. us what you want to tell us about that beat. Okay, well, you know, it was like back in 1950. He was traveling down a dirt road on a horse. <laughs> Came past the church house trying to holler. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey no, man, no, 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 he no. hollering. <laughs> Bless you, Doc Loud. Thank you, 50 no. Rock. Uh, oh, no, I'm joking. <laughs> You know I got jokes, yes. but but no, it was um, 1992. Okay, we met. Um, actually, both of us worked. He was actually, I think, still active duty okay. Army, Fort Myer in Virginia. Okay. Yes. Yep. And I worked at the Raider Health Clinic there. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I was a medical assistant there. Wow. And. It was, I think, the first time we we tell this story a little bit differently. Okay. So he says the first time he saw me, uh-huh. I was standing at a bus stop. Okay. Because my car had broken down, so I was catching the bus that day. Okay. And he said that he saw me at the bus stop, but he didn't want to approach me because I would mess up his music flow. <laughs> okay. So that's that's how he tells it. But okay. he we actually met on base. Okay. We were at the recreation center, mm-hmm. and um, I think I was in there practicing with a, another group that I was singing with. Okay, and so he popped his head in the in the um, the vocal booth, and he was like, "Hey, here's my card. You know, I'm I'm a producer. I'm working on this project called Come Together. You know, see if you want to stop by." And so I'm like, "Okay, this." <laughs> You know, I'm like, okay, whatever. (laughs) But, you know, the crazy thing is, I looked at the card after he left, and the address said North Morgan Street. I said, North Morgan Street? That's my street. I looked closer at that address. Do you know he was in the next building? Wow. That The next apartment building that I was living in. Wow. And so I was like, okay, okay, God. You know, well, you know, I ain't say okay, God, then I ain't even gonna lie, cause I wasn't, I wasn't walking that path right. yet. Okay, okay. But I, I said, okay, I'm curious. Right. So I called the number. I ended up going to the studio and you know working on music and put my All little right. project out, my first project right, that I man. did. Got it played on. Um, I had this new feature artist segment on WHUR. I forgot what it was okay. called, okay. but the song was I guess I'll never know. So. I was so excited about that, you know, I got my song playing and then eventually we started working on the compilation CD which was come together. So okay. that's the short first oh. version. Listen audience, she oh. gave you a bit of nostalgia. So did, he, did he make it known he was interested? No. Uh, no, he was definitely trying to just keep it strictly business. Yeah. But okay. Okay. See, see, that's why I was telling the audience Doc Leslie gave us a little nostalgia just to set us up. What? You know, about 1950, you know, on a dark, dirt yes. road. Yes. And then she shares a 19, 1992 connection. But you know, Doc Leslie, here's a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. How did your Blending family form? Because a lot of people don't really understand some of the dynamics. Or they didn't understand. I, I think 2022, they're getting a better understanding of what the blended family is mm-hmm. they may not know what it takes mm-hmm. um in order to be in the blended family right. because we grew up i know i grew up and i grew up later in the blended family but, but my family was a nuclear family yeah an intact family same yeah. mother and father had yeah. the same children mm-hmm. but how did you guys form your blended family how did that thing kind of come together after y'all met Right. After y'all, you know, decide to make this thing serious. I mean, he probably was already serious and you kind of would just like, you know, <laughs> okay, bro, whatever, you know, you keep it in business, I'm going to keep it in business too. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was definitely a couple of years after. Okay. Um, but I already had two girls. Okay. Before we met. Okay. And he already had one girl. Okay. Before we met. So y'all was bringing the girls together. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Tell, yeah. tell the audience about that. Yeah. So I, um, 
And you know, this I like to share this because some people, you know, they like <gasps> taken aback yeah. by it. But I you know, I like to be as transparent as possible yes. because yes. I like people to to see my honest journey. Yes. And maybe it it may speak to somebody out yes. there Absolutely. who's struggling or or feel like, you know, I've been dealt a bad hand. Exactly. I, I can't do this. I can't now I can't accomplish my dreams. Mm. Right. So I actually had my first daughter when I was 16. Okay. okay. 16 okay. years old. And I remember those days, you know, taking the bus to school, yes. the diaper bag, my school oh, books, yes. my lunch, her lunch. And mm -hmm. people would look at me like I was crazy. I was always like very tiny. I'm not right. that tiny now, but yeah. I was don't, don't, uh, she tiny. Anyway. <laughs> I was always very tiny. And so here it is, this baby with a baby on the bus and everybody looking at me like I'm crazy yeah. and I remember you know being there and struggling with the stroller and diaper yes. bag and books and yes. it was just it was I cannot even put into words how difficult and overwhelming it yeah. was mm -hmm. so I ended up actually not finishing high school I went okay. to T.C. Williams High School no you did not <laughs> yes I oh, did oh no, me yes, yes, I did ain't gonna even drive there go ahead yep. go ahead yep. yep so I went to T.C. Williams I did not graduate from T.C. Williams Williams. I actually entered into a program at Northern Virginia okay. Community College. Okay. It was for single teen moms. Okay. And they allow you to bring your child with you oh, on awesome. campus. Awesome. And so, yep. And so I ended up doing that. They set it up so I could finish my GED. Okay. Awesome. So I finished through that yes. through that program. Yes. And um, the, the two year program with them was in early childhood education. Wow. Awesome. So I got my associates there um but yeah that's that's um how i ended up having my my first daughter and making my little path as yeah. a mom mm -hmm. and then my second daughter was from my first marriage okay, okay. um and so with, let me see now when i had my second daughter I think I went, oh, that's when I went back to school for medical assisting. Okay. And they they had a little campus on Capitol Hill. That school is no longer there. Okay. But that was, I think, a one or two year program. So I ended up doing that. And then that's when I got the little bug, the hunger for education. Yes. And it's like, okay, yes. you know, I have two kids, but I can still do this. Yes. Those people who Speak said, that thing. those people who said, oh, man, you, you messed up your life. Speak that thing. Why oh. didn't you have? an abortion mm. Speak that thing. but I you know I was determined that it didn't matter whatever they said That's whatever right. the odds were whatever the fa the failed marriage looked like yes. I was determined that I had a calling that yes. I had a goal yes. that yes. I had yes. a mission and sometimes mm. I had to just you know empower myself Absolutely. because friends were very few, mm -hmm. very few, and even some family members, yeah. you know, they, they fell back. It's like, oh, you know, you, you messed up your life. Mm -hmm. Because all throughout school, I would always be in the school choir, all county choir, and traveling. Yeah. So, you know, they had big hopes and dreams for yeah. me. You, go, you know, you're going to be a big star That's one right. day. Uh -huh. So, um, fast forward to 1994. Okay. I got pregnant with my son, okay, Lionel Jr. Okay, and um, it was it was that year that um, Lionel said, "Okay, we we gonna come together. Yeah. You know, we let's let's make this a family." Yeah. and definitely in the beginning. Um, it it's it's an adjustment. Oh, absolutely. And because keep in mind, I'm still in my early twenties, mm -hmm. and yeah. you know the brain doesn't really develop until you're like in your mid twenties. Absolutely. Yes. And so some of the things that you know, I had some core values. I, I had some goals. I knew what I right. wanted to accomplish. But also, here's this man over here. He has his goals, his dreams, right. things that he wants to accomplish. Yes. And so keeping uh, in mind what we wanted to do separately we had to find a way that we could merge yes. these things yes. and wow. it, it I mean it was a learning curve it was a learning curve we both grew up in the church 
So we had the foundation. Yes. We knew how to pray. We went to church. Yes. We ended up traveling a lot singing with our children. I mean, our youngest daughter at one point thought we lived in hotels because we were gone <laughs> wow. all the time. Wow. And so they were in church and, you know, we would we would go sing and visit this church or, you know, this event, this function. But they were always with us. And yes. so early on, we had decided we want to plant the word Absolutely. in them also. So, Absolutely. Wow. So I know we got other questions, but I could go on and no, <laughs> on. Dr. Leslie, we don't, we don't, yeah, we have a lot of questions, but, but this, 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 this broadcast mm -hmm. that Doc Michelle and I have is something that can change by the order of the Holy Spirit. Oh, okay. Something okay, gotcha. Change. Gotcha. So, Absolutely. yes, we do have questions because that keeps us in a formula. And we can always have you back on for yeah, the interview too. Part two. Okay. <laughs> so, part two. But I want to say this to you because I, 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 I I'm listening to you, and I'm listening, and yes. I'm seeing young ladies today. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to drop this on y'all, and y'all not ready for this, because y'all didn't know Dr. E had this in his mind. Y'all know what I'm <laughs> Dr. Leslie just put out so many gems yes. to help your psyche, young lady, young gentleman, that your life is never over as long as you have breath. That's now, right. the important things that she was saying is that who are you connected to? Mm -hmm. I like to use the three Fs. Family, friends, and foes. You got to watch mm. out for all of them on so many levels, especially when you have a life adjustment. Yes. And I think when you have children in a time that you don't think you're going to have children, when you should have children, when you shouldn't, I know that comes a lot within the African American community, but who are you connected to? And I'm so grateful that Doc Leslie shared with you, yes. audience, that she had to empower herself. And, and you know, Outside, if you're looking outside at her, it's probably overwhelming for you, but you don't know the overwhelmness for her. But she made a decision. See, here we go. She made a decision to not to allow those minor setbacks to mm. control her destiny. Mm. As, as a young lady today, you may be you may be in high school and you may be pregnant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And everybody is speaking abortion. They're speaking that you've messed up your life because that language yeah. of messing up your life, it has transcended from the 19th century mm. to the 20th century to the 21st century within the black community. Right. But I'm so grateful that you 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 were so transparent and shared with and, and, and I'm just telling you, gentlemen, mm -hmm. for you guys out here, you young men that may be with someone now and you may not have it all together and you may have made that decision or y'all got pregnant together because you don't get pregnant by yourself gentlemen for sure it's two mm -hmm. people that get pregnant it's it's the young lady and the young man that that's how it works mm -hmm. so and i say this young man to you don't give up your life don't give up on that person the mother of your child or children because y'all had a setback because you got pregnant there's still so many things you can do to accomplish. She went to school Absolutely. and she got her GED mm. and, and the, the rest is kind of history. But the beautiful thing that Dr. Lano and Dr. Leslie made a decision that we're going to have a family. Yes. We're going to work this blended family thing out. We're going to let God run us, but we're going to work this out. And so yes. the tools that you're getting today, get your imaginary toolbox and say, this is part of my destiny in this mm -hmm. toolbox. All of your setbacks, all of your disappointments, all the things that you messed up in. Because God is a forgiving God. And he yes, will forgive you. Yes, he is. Yes, and he I is. just wanted to add, sure. God is the giver of life. So no child is an accident. Just amen. wanted to add. That. Amen. Amen. Before we go on to the so, next question, yes. I just want to backtrack a little bit because mm -hmm. I feel like this is also needed. Yes. Going back to um, my first pregnancy mm -hmm. and what I went through with that, mm -hmm. you know... I thought I was, I was so in love. First, first love, teenage right. love yes. can be so like, oh, absolutely. magnetic, crazy, absolutely. you know. Yeah, and absolutely. so I thought this is it. You know, this, I thought this was going to be my lifetime partners. I was all in, but things changed yes. after I got pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, and I soon after my daughter was born, a couple of months after, the father broke up with me. Wow. I was devastated. Absolutely. Yeah. De gutted. Yes. Gutted. Mm -hmm. Because you could not have told me in a million years that we weren't going to be forever. Right. Yes. And it had gotten to the point where I fell into a deep depression. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. deep depression. Um, towards the end of, of my pregnancy, I had been homeschooled. So that had taken me away from a lot of my friends, my close yeah. friends. And so I didn't really have people to talk to. Um, this person who I stayed on the phone with 24-7, if I wasn't on the phone, we were together somehow doing right, something. Right. And so when he broke up with me, I fell into a depression. And I said, I, I can't do this. I wasn't even thinking about my daughter. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just felt like my life was over. Mm -hmm. And I started taking pills mm -hmm. every day. Wow. Every day. Flooding wow. my, whatever pill I could find, I was popping it. I was taking it. Wow. And then I, one day, my mom said, she found me in the room mm -hmm. changing my daughter. But... I hadn't taken the previous pamper off. I was putting on another pamper on top of that pamper. And she started talking to me and she's like, something is wrong, mm -hmm. something is off. Mm -hmm. So they called the ambulance. I ended up getting um, admitted to, I think, Alexandria Hospital Psych Ward or something like that. Okay. Because I had tried to take my life. Mercy, tried mercy. to take my life. Wasn't even thinking, you know, I, I just could not see anything further mm -hmm. in, yes. in, mm -hmm. in the future. Yes. And so I just want to tell whoever is in that situation, mm, if you're going through something, yes. hold on to the life that God has blessed yes. you with because you don't know what the future holds Absolutely. for you. You don't know what God has in store for you down the line. Absolutely. And I believe I had to go through that in order to minister to somebody else yes. later on down the line. Absolutely. Even when I was in the hospital, I remember still trying to reach out and call him, call him. Mm. His mother would talk to me, but he still would not talk to me. So he finally called one day and he said, I hope you don't think this is going to put us back together. That was it. It was like, no, no, how are you? No, I'm sorry. Like nothing consoling, nothing comforting. Yeah. Wow. It was just whew, another dagger. And so, you know, I was I was there for a few weeks. It took me a while to get over and to heal. And then I went into counseling and things like that. But I just wanted to share some no, that's something. Powerful. Like don't yes. don't give up. Don't quit on yourself. Don't quit on your child. Absolutely. Wow. So in other words, as long as you have breath, mm -hmm. that moment that you have does not it does not uh depict your destiny. That's right. Okay? It can always change. Your situation mm -hmm. can always change. Mm -hmm. I had a friend who um, was going through something and she was going to take her life. We were at church mm. and I knew something was wrong. And I approached her in the beginning of church. Mm -hmm. Before church started, I approached her. Mm -hmm. She didn't say in what was wrong, but I approached her. Right. Another one of our friends approached her in the middle of service. Wow. Another one approached her at the end of service. Yeah. None of us was sitting together. Mm. So we hadn't, you know, talked or anything, but we all knew something wasn't right. right. And at the end, she pulled all of us in a room and she said, I was going to leave here. I told the Lord, if he doesn't give me a sign, I was going to leave here and take my mm. life. So now, yeah. Yeah. oh, you should see her now. Man, her life is tremendous. Wow. Wow. So she has her own business. I mean, she is wow. flourishing. Wow. So please, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Doc Leslie is a witness. I'm a witness. Listen, Man, don't gems in the building. Do gems. not do not take your life. Get the help that you need. There are people who will help you. Yeah. All of us sitting here are Christian counselors. So if any mm -hmm. any one mm -hmm. of us is more than willing to help you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your life is not over. That's right. God can always change it around. That's right. Your children's life are not over. That's right. Just remember, I mean, we listen, the reality is, is that you're hearing it straight from Doc Leslie, her experience, which she dealt with, and she has been so, so transparent. One of the things we want to always encourage people on our show, never suffer in silence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody will listen to you. Mm -hmm. It may not be nobody in your inner circle, but if you can just get a lifeline, you can throw a lifeline out to someone. Yes. Um, since we have Facebook, since we have all these technologies, just inbox somebody. Right. You know. Right. Just don't. Just don't give up. All I'm That's saying right. to you. Yes. Don't give up because you don't know what's on the other side of what you're going Absolutely. through. It is greatness. It is. Absolutely. It is tremendous destiny on the other side. Absolutely. So with that said, 
You got All right. a second question. So, <laughs> the next question. Did you and your husband parent on a united front, and did your kids ever try to play y'all against each That's other? That's a two-part. <laughs> Let's hear about that one. Now we got into the grill. We get into the nitty-gritty there. That's so funny. Of, of course, yes, of course, yes. So, when I read this question, I was like, oh, okay, this is funny, because immediately it reminded me of we had um, our grand, our oldest two grandsons over last week and the oldest one asked my husband for something some toy could we go to walmart and get a toy and he said well i don't know we'll see maybe right right. but i mean it wasn't five minutes later when my husband turned the corner he asked me the exact same question i said didn't you just ask your grandfather that what did he tell you Okay, well then, he, if that's what he said, then that's what it is. And that's how you have to Absolutely. be. Don't let them play you, because they will try it. They will try it every time. And if you're not on one accord, they Come will on. get you. Come on. You got to have that understanding. A lot of parents have got got right now. Listen Ooh. to this broadcast. They probably scratching their heads. Dr. They Leslie, will they try got got it. They got got today. And they're smart. Them kids, they're not stupid. Oh, them kids are brilliant. Our kids, they would like, okay, say for example, our son. He, of course, was always interested in sports. And my husband played sports. Right. So if it was anything that had to do with sports or getting together with some kids to play sports, he would ask my husband. Yeah. And if it was anything that, you know, something that I cared about, he would ask me or the girls would ask me right. but if it was something that th- they thought they could get a yes out of my husband they would ask him so you know they try to be slick that way and, and play you know it's like didn't I say you have to do your homework first you know so you definitely have to be on, on one accord let, let, you know I'm, I'm, I'm chuckling <laughs> Because Doc Leslie said grandkids now listen you grandparents out there now y'all know y'all ain't got got Y'all been got so much, you don't put a new name in the word. Put your face in the word G-O-T in the dictionary. Oh, my God. (laughs) Nana, God. Papa, God. And I know we grew up in society. We don't like to say no. Or did you ask your grandmother? Or did you clear that with your grandfather? Mm -hmm. We automatically give in to those little brilliant, beautiful babies. Mm -hmm. Them smiles. And them smiles and them puppy eyes. eyes. (laughs) But let me tell you something. Papa D, I'm not wired that way. Uh Did you talk to Nana? Mm -hmm. No, I didn't. And yes, I did. What was her answer? Her answer was no. Wait a while. Mm -hmm. No. Wait a while. That's it. Because I tell you, some of you grand, grandmothers, y'all cream puffs. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. Yep. Y'all know y'all cream puffs. Y'all might well say amen. Them kids, all they got to do is look at you, and they get you a little tear, yeah. you done. Yeah. Some of you yeah, putty yeah. in the hand. Mm-hmm. You know I'm telling the truth. I'm not telling you don't get it for them. I'm not telling you don't bless them. But a couple of times, do your homework first. Yeah. Do your chores. Mm-hmm. If you old enough, make your bed. Right. Okay, you see, I'm smiling, all right? (laughs) Didn't I just get you a toy yesterday? Now we're going back to Walmart again? Yes. Every time we go in the store, you want a different toy. You you have to be on one united front, really. Yeah. Um, I, I actually picked out a scripture sure. about this. What, go let's go to the word, see what the word Absolutely. says about it. Let's do it. It's in um, Mark 3. I think it is verse 20... 25 and if a house be divided against itself that house cannot stand Mm -hmm. it's it's so so true Mm -hmm. you as a as a wife you cannot have a certain set of ideals Mm -hmm. and a husband has a set a separate set of ideals and morals and values you have to decide as a couple what is important for your family Yes. What are we setting up here? What comes next? What comes next? What What's down here? What's low priority? What's high priority? Because if you don't, if I'm over here focused and I'm saying, oh, well, I'm not interested in that. I'm not doing that. Y'all can go ahead. I don't care about that. That's not important to me. I'm opening up a door, a come crack, on. a window for the enemy to come yes, in. Indeed. And what wherever I am weak, wherever my thorns are so to speak Mm -hmm. 
you open that door, that crack for the enemy to come in and and Absolutely. and and put in little messages on TV, on the radio, Absolutely. on your cell phone yeah. that will take you away from the focus, from the family come plan. On, and you before you know it, you down the rabbit hole mm -hmm. and your all of your focus yes. and attention is here yes. instead of over here. And and here you you have your children out in the streets doing whatever. Yeah. You got uh mm -hmm. your daughter listening to some boy who ain't no good and, and you know and and before you know it mm -hmm. the family is falling yes. apart. Yes. It's falling apart. Mm -hmm. But you have to realize that, you know, you have to stay together when not only during good times, but especially during bad times. Yes. Unity, yes. unity, yes. unity. You have to stay together. And then, uh, you know, another point I wanted to make is that, you know, God is genius in a way that the enemy may think he has authority over his minions to mm -hmm. trick you and do this yes. and do that but yes. God has a way of making Satan's authority work for the good to yes. work out yes. for on. him to bless you in your life yes. and so I think it's important that you know you you stay on one accord as man and wife that is so it sounds like okay. you are saying there's no room for selfishness uh, no, not at all. I mean, of course you need a little me time, you know. Yeah, and that's Absolutely. important. Right, Absolutely. right. But, uh, you know, I'm talking about the mindset, the overall Absolutely. mindset. Absolutely. It has to be one. Absolutely. Audience, I don't know if y'all grabbed this, but I grabbed it. <laughs> I grabbed it. The biggest problem in most young people that are couples, most middle-aged people that are couples, most seniors that are couples, if they've forgotten that that essential principle of unity mm. and we I get concerned because we get so caught up in our own ideals in our own ideologies our own goals that we forget about the person that we're connected to the person that we said yes to I will mm -hmm. is that we supposed to be coming towards one yes and it's too much too much um, it's too much looseness it's too much opening see when you open up and, and Doc Lester said a crack you know what happens to a crack? <laughs> if you don't fix that crack, that crack gonna get bigger. Wider, wider. It's gonna get wider, and yeah. then it's gonna expand into a place that you can't get the the the, the unity back. Right. And I realized today that most couples today are wondering why they can't get to the place of unity mm -hmm. because for so long we what we did we 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 glossed over the flag mm -hmm. that God was yeah. trying to show yeah. us. That there's some there's some disagreement there's some not there's some factors that are creeping in that we don't want to address because we don't want to have real conversations Absolutely. because that person won't get upset or this mm -hmm. person. but see if you're gonna listen let me say this you need to fight for your unity you need yes. to fight to be on one accord you yes. need to fight for being and having the spirit of agreement especially mm -hmm. when you have when them little people come in your life. They are sitting soaking all of this stuff. Yeah, you they think they're not they're soaking up. They, you think they're not they're soaking stuff that. up about how you mm -hmm. and mommy are different, how you and mommy handle and how y'all respond to one. They sitting in there and they respond because it's going into their little psyche. Absolutely. And they was like, wow, mommy is really different than daddy. Mm -hmm. And they only come to agreement when they both want something from yeah. one another. Mm -hmm. When other things are not coming together, that's why if you if you set a, a tone, mm. we're not going to do this today. And they come to you and say, Mom, Dad said I can't do this today. But then you let your son or daughter pull you in, Mama, or pull mm -hmm. you in, Dad, mm -hmm. and do this today. You just open the door for the vision to come in. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and see, kids are a part of their environment. And the last thing I'll say, because I've been doing this series on culture. I believe that every family should have a vision for their family. Yes. And that vision mm -hmm. should be a vision of one accordness first. Yes. A vision to, to get away from my, me, my, these personal pronouns. Ooh. And where we keep ourselves on separate sheets more times than we want. Yeah. And so I just want to encourage you to understand when you parent on a united front, that you parent for the best uh, first of all, of one another, and then parent for the best of the children. One of the things I've had the experience with, 
I have played team sports most of my young children and young adult life. And I realized that, and this is an old cliche, there's no I in team. Mm -hmm. right. Team mm -hmm. is T-E-A-M. Mm -hmm. And when you get to the place to understand that we're a team, and a team, you have different personalities, you have different ideas, you have different things, but you come together for the betterment mm -hmm. of the whole family. That's right. And when you do that, listen, when you do that, you can, you can be married for 25 years. You can be married for 30 years. And you're going to have some ups and downs, ebb, ebb and flows. Mm. But you all came, to, at the end of the day, we came together as mom and dad. Yeah. Yeah. Can I say something sure. about that ebb and flow? Absolutely. Because one of the things that I, you know, we had to learn the hard way. Mm -hmm. you, you go through these things. And then one day I had an epiphany when I was working for a children's hospital. I used to go to all of these workshops and seminars and get better this, learn how to read fast and retain the information and team building and things like that. We often will do what it takes to be better on our jobs. Uh -oh. We don't have any Sweet. problems going to take an extra workshop so we can get that promotion, more Come money, whatever, now. whatever. But we don't put that same work into our marriages. <sighs> Couples don't want to proactively seek counseling or proactively go to a marriage workshop. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always have to be when something is wrong. You know? Absolutely. So that's all I want to say about Listen, that. Listen, Doc. Well, I, just wanna, sweep the room. I, I just want to <laughs> add all the principles of God are being challenged. And yes. so you do not want to fall prey to the enemy's hands. Make sure you are getting the help that you need. And like, like Doc said, if you do a refresher. It's good to refresh sometimes. Sometimes you get, you know, you get mm -hmm. in your routines, you know, and sometimes it's just good to do a refresher. And please laugh. Yes. So many couples are so serious. Yes. Laugh. Get some joy and some fun in your marriage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this one over here, three o'clock in the morning, we wake up laughing oh about something goodness. that happened the next. I mean, Ooh. we are laughing. I'm almost fell out of bed one time when we uh, left. So uh, this one here, she is wonderful at that. Uh, and she's taught me that because sometimes when you're in the military, you have, sometimes that military mind switch over when it shouldn't. Mm. But she taught me how to laugh and have fun. And so I, I will crack a joke now. I'll become yes. the family comedian. You don't even understand. I'm laughing at y'all right now because y'all too, y'all serious right now. <laughs> Y'all, y'all looking at Doc Leslie. Why she in my business? Cause God wanted to be in your business. Yeah. This last thing I'm gonna say. Good. When I go to my next question, let me say this. Cause God want me to say it. Yes. Don't put God out your marriage. Mm -hmm. Amen. Please That's don't. Right. Don't evict God. That's Please. right. Let That's me move right. on. That's right. That's right. As a as a blended family bonus mom, what has been your most challenging experience? Two parts. And also your most rewarding experience as a bonus mom, you know, because because being a bonus mom or uh, I know some people are stepmom. I, we mm -hmm. don't use step for, for reasons of our own personal preference. Mm -hmm. But being a bonus mom, mm -hmm. um, what has been one of the challenging experience? Because Doc Lano had a daughter mm -hmm. when you guys yeah. met. Yep. So how it, that may have moved a lot easier for you than somebody just you know it depends on the age of a child too I yeah. think the challenges come if you move into a teenager you come in right. with a teenager and, and you're not the the biological mom they're going to be right. popping it you know how they pop right. I just hope right. they don't pop around the one that will catch that pop and say why you do anyway <laughs> Right. No, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely right. The age does make a difference. But um, for us, his daughter would come when she was, you know, young, very young, elementary school and stay with us, you know, months at a time for summers yeah. and things like that. And so I think that sometimes the hardest part, um, certainly in the beginning, was one, not having a relationship or communication with the mother right. mm -hmm. and then just having any type of preconceived notions about how you think things are going to be or should be or could be um, you know worrying yourself to death about it and you know worrying about oh how am I going to step into the role of being right. her mother you can't you can't think of it like that you're never right. going to be her mother their mother his mother you're never going to you know fill those shoes right. so instead you have to say okay 
they're a different person I'm a different person we bring a different set of you know skills and things yes. to the table life yes. experiences Absolutely. so whereas the mom may have been really good at this and pour it into the child I also have some things to yes. offer yes. to yes. bring you know and so I think that you know at some point that's what I, I begin to focus on it's okay. like okay I know I can do these things good I'm gonna teach you how to do this you know I'm gonna fill in you know if, if you're you had a bad day at school and your mom's not there to give you a hug okay I can do that you know yeah. and develop your own unique relationship with them and I think that once they know that you're not trying to take over and be their mom but you are still there for them and you yeah. still care for them then that's what they appreciate yeah that's what they appreciate wow. I think the heart oh one other thing yes. that was was really hard hard to hear is that you know when children are in a relationship uh, in the family all together and it's it and then all of a sudden something happens and you break up and mm -hmm. then they they're they're crushed and here comes this new person mm -hmm. You know, they they had dreams of their parents always being together. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. I remember, I, yeah, you too. know, I remember hearing her and feeling what she was feeling that I want my mommy and daddy to get back together. You know, like, what are you doing? And so I feel like there was a period where she resented me and she wasn't feeling me. <laughs> she wasn't feeling me. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's it's okay to allow them to have those feelings Absolutely. and process those Absolutely. feelings and, you know, just kind of, you know, take a step back. Mm -hmm. But just, you know, let them know I'm still here for you. Absolutely. So, wow. Yeah. Um, the most rewarding experience that you have have had as a bonus mom with, um, your, with your daughter bonus daughter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was in those small moments. I can't okay. pinpoint right. one specific thing. Gotcha. But like I said, you know, she she would come home from school having a bad day. She came from a totally different state. Right. And so she didn't have a core set of friends. And she was kind of like outside yeah. of the, the circles and the mm -hmm. cliques and all of that stuff. And so, you know, it was it felt good for me to be able to give her a hug and say, you know, it's going to be okay. And I wanted you to awesome. say that I, I, see, I'm, I, I, I wanted you, you to set me up. I set you up okay. because I wanted our audience to know how important it is mm -hmm. to be comfortable in your skin mm -hmm. as the bonus mom. Oh yeah, and to understand that you can do it over and over again, mm -hmm. and that's because you're developing a relationship and you're sensitive mm -hmm. to your bonus son or bonus daughter mm -hmm. that you can give them what they need at that moment. Right, and sometimes people need to hear it more than once. Because sometimes we, we're in our brain space mm -hmm. and we can miss one of the most essential principles that you, and, and people in our audience, they do that. I know yeah. because I deal with you all the time. Uh -huh. What did Doc Leslie say? Okay. Or what did she mean? And so I okay. wanted you to say it again because okay. there's, a, there's a bonus mom right now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that has a, a bonus daughter Yes. that she is struggling with trying to find that balance. Yeah. And one of the things I want to encourage bonus moms and bonus dads, have, if they're old enough, have a sit down with them and say, listen, first of all, you need to know I'm not trying to take the place of oh, your mom yeah. or mm -hmm. your dad. Right. Pour, plant that seed so that they can have yeah, the space to say, wow, you know, man, Doc Leslie is not trying to take my mom's. Mm -hmm. She just want to be the very best she can be to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. and so you create a mm -hmm. different environment. Right. Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a big communicator and I think because I, I said somebody today, I will be a trillionaire if I can read minds. Ooh, I will be right. a trillionaire. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. but I tell people, communicate. And I tell bonus dads and bonus parents, don't assume. And like you said, so one of you, don't go to that space and say, now how is this going to work? How am I not? Yes. Because sometimes you will, you will do those mental gymnastics and you'll be mm -hmm. worn out for the baby That's to get right. to your house. That's right. And then, and then you can't pour into them. Right. And so, thank you. Yes. <laughs> so the next question. Okay. What advice would you give an engaged couple or newly married couple about to embark on the blended family journey? Oh, man. <laughs> mm. I mean, okay, certain situations you you can't prepare for. Right. You just you it's just life. You you can't yeah. prepare for it. Yeah. But certainly a conversation is needed and in depth 
serious conversation uh-huh. about expectations, mm. about values, about how the household is going to be ran, yes. about being on one accord. Because if you don't, like I said, you you have these children who are coming from different environments, different set of core values. Maybe they had breakfast, lunch, and dinner at this time, and you could eat in your own separate rooms instead of all coming together at the table and eating together. You know, they need to understand that some things are going to change. Yes. You know, and so I think it's important that um, you definitely have that conversation. But also, it's important. You you may want to have a third party, a counselor to come in and, and sit down and talk. You know, especially if that communication hasn't been the best between you and your mate, your spouse. You know, you definitely want to invite some, yes. some, some communication in. That's going to be key. Communication and understanding. And then, you know, realize that as things come up, you know, you're going to have some roadblocks and some hurdles and some things to get through and over. And, you know, those situations can become very heated. And sometimes, um, you know, it's hard to take a back seat because everybody always wants to be right. And yes. so everybody oh. is fighting to to be heard, to get their point across. And what happens is... If everybody's shouting and talking over each other, nobody's hearing anything but their (laughs) own voice. Not at all. You know? And so I think that you have to come into certain situations seeking to hear and to understand that person. You may not always agree with everything that they say and their point of view, Mm -hmm. but at least if you open yourself up to, okay, just, just pace yourself. Be patient. You don't have to jump into an answer real quick, you know? But just be open to understanding at least understanding and hearing that person out wow communicate mm-hmm. we won't finish this broadcast uh, today so we're gonna have to bring doc leslie back we're not cutting off yet but we we just was given by our stage station manager that we got to wrap things up um let me say this real quick for the next question um we may not get through it dr leslie you said it over and over you said core values mm. i want to encourage everybody that's listening to this broadcast talk about core values in your home you may be in an intact or nuclear family there needs to be some core values even if you don't have a bonus child or a bonus daughter or a bonus son even in your intact family what are your core values Mm -hmm. what are things that's driving Mm -hmm. why you are a family and especially in a blended family because like Dr. Bless just said it's so many moving parts let me just say that yeah 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 what are your core values? Mm-hmm. Listen, Doc Leslie, we have enjoyed you. It's uh, been a pleasure. You've been tremendous. And so y'all need to know that she's coming back. Part two, because we, we're not going to finish this. My wife going to drop down. Go ahead and drop down, baby. To the next question. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to drop down to number nine. Okay. So, you are an ordained minister of the gospel, mm-hmm. the minister of music at Abiding Love Ministries, and a dynamic prayer warrior. Now, you didn't put that in your bio, but I'm saying that because I heard the sister pray, okay? Dynamic prayer warrior. Amen. How was your experience when God called you and have your asthma, because you have asthma and fibro al- al- fibromyalgia, myalgia, mm-hmm. um, hindered you in any way? Has it hindered you any, in any way? Ooh, let me see how I can answer this quick. I have been through so much. I mean, the asthma is, 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 is something that, you know, thank God now I am pretty good with, Mm -hmm. you know, but there's been times where three, four times a year I'm hospitalized in ICU, intubated, can't breathe. Mm -hmm. And I had diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, fibromyalgia, chronic kidney stones. So I was having surgery, surgery, surgeries. Um, I've had my gallbladder removed. I had gallstones. Yeah. And so, you know, at some point I had to be on permanent disability. I couldn't hold down a job. Right. And, you know, I was so sick we couldn't go out sing, singing and making right. money. And so, you know, it was those times in the hospital that God began to speak to me. And the very last time I was in ICU yeah. was during COVID. 
Wow. wow. My husband could he was usually there all the time when I'm in the hospital. We were on FaceTime and so I felt isolated. And sometimes God has to take you through all of these things. Yes. And when you're alone and you don't have anywhere else to turn, nobody else to talk to, yes. you you're still and so you can really hear his voice. Yes. I don't know still what it fully means, but he said, I had to teach you how to breathe wow. and you will never be the same. Wow. And so it was during the whole COVID isolation lockdown that I began to minister and preach, wow. um, you know, frequently. Yes. And so I think that as far as ministry and preaching and evangelizing and reaching out, that it, yes. it definitely the calling mm -hmm. had to be during COVID. So mm -hmm. what? The enemy meant for evil. Uh, God, God turned, turned it around. It around for your good. Yes. <laughs> Listen, yes. broadcast. So she did not let that hinder her. That's right. Is what we're getting That's to, right. everybody. So no matter what your station is in life, God can always turn it around for you. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for Doc Leslie. We thank you for my wife. Yes. We thank you for WBGR. Bless yes. our audience. Let them be in tune and listen for the next time Doc Leslie yes. will join us. Bless them and strengthen them in the precious name of Jesus. Name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Doc Leslie, yes. Thank you. 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 Th